Hi all, I have yet another very interesting game to show you from TSEC Season 19. Leela was playing with the white pieces against Ethereal. So this is in round 28. We see the opening book given D4 from Leela. We go into a King's Engine defense. And it's the Fianchetto variation. So this is very solid for white usually. We have B3 here and this is the end of the book given. We have Ethereal playing E5 and now D5, C takes, C takes Bishop D7, Knight D2 and it looks as though White's got quite a comfortable position with a tempo gain possibility. So Rook C8, Knight C4 gaining that tempo, Queen A6, Bishop D2 and now B5, Knight E3, Queen A3, we see Rook C1, Knight A6, Knight C2 hitting the Queen again. The Queen goes to C5 and now E4. White has a space advantage, but Black seemingly has a plan involving the C file. I've played Black on occasion uh, with the King's Engine in this kind of position, and I felt a bit uncomfortable actually about the C file usage. White's space advantage here uh, means, you know, this is quite rare for Black to play on the C file like this. It can be tactically justified quite often. The classic King's Engine plans might mix in F5 at some point. Black's not in a position to maybe do that here. So Queen B6, we have H3. And the Rooks do double. It looks as though this is a logical thing to double Rooks, combine and win. But it kind of, in a way, it conflicts with the pawn chain. Uh, the kind of right to play on a certain side of the board is often dictated by the pawn chain. And it's as if white has the more fundamental right to play on the queen side than black. And the black pieces are technically a little bit congested. You can see that this d5 pawn is depriving black of key squares. And this knight is also lacking in squares at the moment. It seems a bit congested. We see Queen F3, parrying the pressure for a moment on the C file. Rook C4, A3. So at the moment trying to withstand the pressure. So protecting that B4 pawn. But immediately here, perhaps this is like an allergic reaction. <laughs> it, it feels like some sort of allergic reaction uh, here. We have Rook takes C3 being played. So why? Why sack the exchange here? Uh, this goes to what I'm saying. Sometimes it feels like you've got a right to play in a certain sector of the board. And here it's like black is rebelling against white's authority, in a way, on this side of the board with these advanced pawns here. If knight c7, just to give an example, knight e3, you can see the rook hasn't got many squares, nor is the knight. But if it goes like this, for example, it seems, you know, there's pressure on b5. And this kind of thing, you know, white gets to play in a very comfortable way soon, for example, like this. And if black plays this, then knight takes b5, hits the queen and the rook, as an example. It seems very unpleasant, potentially, if the exchange sack is not made. Uh, let's go through this again. Knight c7, so hitting the rook. The rook hasn't got that many squares, so white eventually can double. And it's the, you know, the pawn structure really gives authority to white, in my view, for the pieces to improve. So knight f1, and I mentioned this, and I mentioned rook d4. If rook goes back to c7, it seems a4, and, you know, that is quite a nasty pin, actually, against b5. And not only that, this bishop has got more potential than the other Fianchetto bishop here. This is just locked in by its own pawn chain. So it's as if white has the right and enjoyment to enjoy uh, pressure against, for example, b5, and black hasn't got any corresponding enjoyment there. If we go back here, um, so rook d4, yeah. So I mentioned queen e1. And instead of queen takes a3, if king h7, then that enjoyment of b5 is shown here with bishop f1. And if here, you know, a4, so this bishop, clearly, it seems more functional than the corresponding bishop. Okay, the bishop's, you know, on that diagonal, but it seems white can get a small edge here anyway. So for whatever the reason, um, 
Ethereal decided to sacrifice the exchange. So we have bishop takes c3, knight takes e4, queen takes e4, rook takes c3. And the first interesting point to note is actually this bishop's quite dangerous potentially on this diagonal for bishop h6. And it's that issue which is parried here with queen h4. Not only parrying queen uh, bishop h6, but also it means sometimes the queen is also looking at d8. So preventing bishop h6 immediately is important. If queen e2, for example, instead, bishop h6, it turns out here, this is extremely unpleasant after bishop f5. If knight e3, this is very unpleasant. Black sir got a big advantage there. And if knight a1, then there's rook takes g3 with full compensation for the exchange, while it's king compromised. So yeah, it's... It's very, very interesting, this move, queen h4, very scientific move. Uh, we have queen c7, and now another scientific move, queen g5, believe it or not. Queen g5. Now, queen b6 is played. If rook takes c2, then another feature of the queen being there is queen d8 check, picking up d7. And this position, in fact, there's a common square of interest after f4, the f7. So this is a very dangerous scenario where black's getting smashed, basically. So um, we have, uh, in fact, queen b6, and it starts to give the idea that white might be consolidating, simply being the exchange up without too much hassle. Taking off a pair of rooks now, it looks like a conversion, an exchange up. And this very neat move, knight a1 now, gives the idea that the knight is heading for a very nice c6 square. Pardon me, pardon me. C6. Yeah, the knight's heading for C6 here. That Fianchetto bishop gives authority, extra authority to the pawn, authority to use C6. This game seems to echo, you know, the the issues and, and the backfire when there is authority or when there, there isn't. There is an authority over the C6 square. It's you know, the pawn structure is giving natural support for white to use c6, and Leela is taking that support. So knight e8, knight b3, f5, rook c1, a6, knight a5. It's alignment. What is alignment fundamentally? Is it is alignment an emphasis tool? Is the alignment, when you say thanks to something, if you're aligned to your strengths it's like you're giving credit and thanks to your strengths this pawn on d5 you know creates this very intuitively correct plan of planting a knight on c6 okay and then after that you know that there's going to be other plans growing from that so we have f4 this looks rather desperate as if there's an impending disaster anyway and this becomes some sort of lesser evil tactical response to play f4 if king g8 knight c6 king f8 rook c2 uh, this situation you know white can improve with queen e3 for example and if a knight gets into e6 it turns out here that black is actually weak on the light squares for example like this the light squares start crumbling they're all horrible targets d5 and f5 so this would be a big advantage for white. So this seems to be a less evil panicky decision, f4. It does weaken light squares, uh, well, a key light square. Knight c6, bishop h6. We have rook a1. Uh, clearly not the blunder king h2, that's check and take the queen. So rook a1, king f7, and now queen e1, f takes, f takes, queen e3. It looks as though black's just playing into white's hands. Here with a queen exchange, you're not supposed to simplify it when you're material down. If king g8, on the other hand, then a4 as the example, and the a6 pawn seems extremely vulnerable here. And this example shows actually that something like b5 can crash through on the seventh rank or win material like this as an example. So it seems as though black is starting to play these lesser evil moves which don't look particularly logical uh, to just simplify when the exchange down and now knight b8 bishop c8 rook e1 bishop g5 we have rook e2 so the rook is going to make use of the c file ignoring 
the bishop. Uh, so king g1 here, rook b2, or is it? Rook b2. And now rook c2. Uh, just kidding around with that. Rook c7 check. And the rook goes to c6, that natural square. Bishop d3, we have knight takes a6. And this is a conversion job, the exchange up now, it seems, if we look at this. As technique, as, as the Russians would say. So is it technique? So a3 has been swapped here potentially for uh, d6, or is it? No, d6 is really, really solid. But is it so solid now? Knight f5. Bishop takes e4, taking out a centre pawn. So d6 isn't so solid now. Um, this looks like not good to simplify the position further. Well, it's just the exchange up. And we have, OK, d5 taken. But it looks as though d6 is dropped. So that was the exchange of prisoners in effect, as Nimzovich would say when both sides exchange off weaknesses. So we have a simplification as a result. But here, yeah, the exchange up, it doesn't seem as though this wasn't this wasn't a massively complex game. It looks as though leaders made this exchange up conversion fairly a straightforward process. Uh, so we have here, you know, navigating all the tactics. This looks dismal. Uh, yeah, it looks as though this is bad news, Baz for black uh, just the exchange down and the king now centralizes that cuts off the opponent's king and the white king marches towards the center so improving the position improving the position until it's very very clear there's not only no compensation for being exchanged down but white's pieces are especially the king now is actually better than the opponent's king and black actually uh, resigned here. The black position is starting to crack here. It's starting to be almost like a, a zugzwang. Concretely, in this final position, as an example, if king d7, yeah, king f5 is strong. If the bishop tries to come to support the g5 pawn, then rook e4 is a key move, and knight e5 check helps the knight go to f3. And you can see that the pawn's dropping off, and that's going to be the end of that game there for sure and if we look again uh, and look at king f7 the same effect really king f5 keeps the black king out hits the pawn if bishop e3 again we see a familiar pattern here emerging rook e4 and the knight can bounce off e5 and hit the bishop and it's also check here and of the bishop in fact because of that discovered check so it's pretty miserable this game and position g5 appears to be dropping off under most circumstances in this final position. OK, uh, a very interesting game. If you want to uh, check out my new course, by the way, Kings Crusher TV slash opening tango. I've really analyzed uh, Knight C6 versus E4, and I've also analyzed the Mexican defense. And even if you're just an E5 player, by the way, there's also a system against the Scotch game, which is inter interesting, involving a, a pesky bishop b4 check. Uh, so it's worth that section alone, I feel, uh, for preparation if you're a classic player for e5 against e4. There's also a bit.ly slash Leela chess playlist to check out for other Leela games. King's Crusher TV Discord for, for chat. And if you want to challenge me for a game, bit.ly slash chess mold, just register there and I'll be able, able to invite you for a game at five days a move. Nice and leisurely. Okay. Comments, questions, like, share, subscribe with the notification bell. Always appreciated. Thanks very much.